This is possibly unsafe? This I think so. is possibly I think unsafe. So. I think so. It's been so long since we had a chance to record this. Possibly unsafe, people. Welcome to the video. That's, that sounded that's stupid. This. That was awful. <laughs> <laughs> awful. This is Possibly Unsafe. I'm Michael Hand. And I'm Patrick Norton. And we're back. Sorry it took so long. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> you have an apartment? I have a new job, new apartment, new car. First car ever. Yeah, there's a lot of changes going on here. A lot of changes going on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we're gonna change some capacitors today. How's that for a segue, people? Um, Good job. So I picked up a couple of vintage speakers, uh, and these are really cool. These are uh, Klipsch Heresy speakers. Okay. Some people love them, some people hate them. And what's interesting is I discovered as I started talking to people about them and going online, is that capacitors, it turns out, capacitors are an important component on the crossover inside of this, right? There's three components in here. That's the thing that splits the yeah. audio coming in into like the highs and yeah. the mids and the lows, right? Exactly, so they've got like a tweeter, a squawker, and a woofer. Okay. So, and there's a board that basically divides a signal up there. So what I didn't realize is capacitors um, degrade in performance over time. So by the time a capacitor is 10 or 20 years old, at least if it's from like the 70s or 80s, it's probably barely functioning as a capacitor anymore. So you bought a kit yes. specifically for these speakers so that it should be an easy sort of thing with high quality capacitors, right? Yeah, well, I mean, you can, you can do it. You can nose around and find, like in this case, uh, Kreitz speakers, this guy named Bob Kreitz is kind of the guru, the whisperer of clip speakers for repair and restoration and modifications. And he sells kits, uh, you know, basically DIY kits that have the capacitors and the mounts you need to take out the old capacitors, which are like the size of paint cans and swap them in with modern capacitors that actually have a much, uh, probably perform much closer to the spec the original ones should have performed at when new. Cool, so this should be a pretty easy job. Wanna jump in? Last time you said easy, we spent nine hours. I have faith this time. He has faith. I Let us open faith. the speakers. I'm always wrong. Michael, welcome to the inside of a vintage audio speaker. It's so empty. Yeah, well that's just it. Most speakers, especially the bigger the speaker is, the more empty space there is usually. Um, the more empty space, the bigger the speaker, the more bass oftentimes the speaker will put out. Uh, it's kind of funny, somebody um, ported this speaker, which is probably an attempt to make the speaker sound like it has more bass than it does. Um, this is way too small a port. We're gonna be making this go away, but plugging holes is not what we're really talking about today. It's like one of those things that you put on a car so you can go underwater. <laughs> it does look like a snorkel. Let's talk about the thing we're supposed to talk about. The thing that's interesting is these are capacitors. Those aren't, those don't look like capacitors that I've ever seen before. You haven't opened up a lot of 40 year old, 50 year old ham radio equipment. No. Yeah, so we're gonna replace these capacitors with these Sonicaps, which are audiophile cool guy capacitors. These are made to a super high, uh, they're just awesome. They're incredibly well made. Um, the ESR is like unmeasurable. They actually deliver the capacitance that's on the label rather than something within five or a hundred percent of it. Um, by replacing them, we will end up with uh, the high end's gonna sound like it was originally supposed to, because right now it, it, it kind of, my understanding is they will sound brighter and crisper and a, a lot of the detail will be restored to the high end because as the capacitors get old over time, um, they sort of act like a filter on the audio. So it's just a simple swap and then just, we're done? Yeah. Cool, let's do it. Look kids, it's a big honking crossover or balancing network. Balancing network sounds better. It does sound better. The actual replacement's super easy, just clip the leads and then we just stripped the wire, twisted around the, the new cap and then soldered it in place so that it, yeah. it stayed. Mostly just don't have a cold solder joint, so make sure you heat up the wire, not the solder, and then just feed the solder into the wire. And that looks like a pretty good connection, at least through the ones with this camera. That's all that matters for the internet. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's fine, eh? It's a tough lens. <laughs> just... And it didn't even strip the wire. <laughs> This is why we use the nice wire cutters. And no, these are not the nice wire cutters. These are just the best tool we can find in the immediately surrounding 100 yards. You use the old screws that held the old capacitors down to put the little zip tie mount in. Strap the capacitor down with the zip tie mount. If you were smarter than we are, you would have put uh, 
uh, heat shrink on all four ends just in case to make sure that the leads cross because uh, capacitor leads crossing is bad. Uh, and then it's just reverse assembly and attach an amp to it. Should we do the second one or should we listen to them side by side before we swap the second set of caps? Let's do side by side even though we will swap no matter what. Done. I can see the train coming Watch that big light shine this way Hear that whistle Lord, it's been an awful day. What do you think? I think I hear a difference, and that's <laughs> saying a lot with audio things because usually I can't notice when we're like upgrading DACs and things like that. It's kind of scary <laughs> sometimes, actually. It's, it's, I'm actually excited. I think it cleaned it up. More importantly, I don't have to worry about one of these bad boys leaking all over the inside of my speaker or taking out one of the the drivers, which is a good thing. Yeah, this is a, a great just beginner soldering project mm -hmm. because it's just making sure that the wires are staying together, which is the best kind of soldering. Yeah, it, much better than say, you know, we have that old subwoofer where you'd have to, well, as I've, now that I've torn apart the PCB, but like getting these out would be a mess. You would have to desolder and remove and yank and cut. And you know what? I'm, I'm desperate to actually get this running again. So now I'm going to do this one next. More, more cap replacements in the future, maybe. More cap replacements, <laughs> probably not on the show, but just in my personal life. Yeah, I replace caps. You got a problem with that? Deal with it. <laughs> Possibly on safe.com is the website. Did you really want to blow up the old capacitors? Absolutely. I've never seen a 1970s era capacitor blow up on YouTube. <laughs> YouTube.com slash possibly unsafe. That's where you can find it. And maybe. if you'd like to help pay for our impending <laughs> medical bills and or potential stays in a burn facility, please patreon.com slash possibly unsafe. Till next time. I'm Patrick Norton. I'm Michael Hand. We'll see you next. Well, yeah, well, the thing he said until next time. I'll just stop talking now. <laughs> <laughs> We're bad at endings. <laughs>